You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Donald Trump literally said he has done more for black Americans than any other president in history. He said possibly even including Abraham Lincoln. Jonathan Swan asked him, um, Joseph, about President Lyndon Baines Johnson and the Civil Rights Act. And Trump goes, how did that turn out? It actually turned out Look. well. It was the public accommodations. Act. So when you hear him say he has done more for black Americans than any president in history, what do you say? I mean, I actually think it's it's pretty sad um, because quietly as it's kept, he really did have the opportunity to do a lot of good things for black America. And he simply watched the piss go by or in some cases said that there were many fine people on both sides. Um, so, I mean, I think the, the hard truth is that I think most people of color uh, know that when it comes to the administration, there is what is tangential, what has been done when it comes to the First Step Act and when it comes to uh, opportunity zones. But words do matter. They certainly matter when they come from the leader of the free world. Um, and I think that the things that happen in between the legislation also have an impact on how history views you and how you're able to make an impact on society and communities of color. And so I think that when you weigh those things side by side, there are many things that have happened uh, that make black Republicans cringe, uh, that make black Americans terrified. Um, and the fact that even in this interview, you can't even find three nice words to string together about John Lewis, a man who literally had his head beaten in so that people that look like us could have freedom and justice in this country. Um, I, I think it speaks volumes for why, as much as you'll have certain Republicans who say that President Trump is going to get 30 percent of the African-American vote, it is more realistic that he will probably get less than 10 because it's there is no emotional connectivity or trust that exists right now, no matter how many times they run ads about Alice Johnson being freed from prison. Um, Malik, I'm trying to understand something here. Here we go to my iPad. You know, Trump loves to tout the black unemployment rate. Um, and if you look at this chart right here. Uh, which breaks it down. The black unemployment rate reached a high in March of 2010 of 19.3%. This was following, of course, uh, the worst economic calamity in America since the Great Depression. Uh, that took place under Republican President George W. Bush. Then all of a sudden you see the black unemployment rate again peaking here, then all of a sudden going down, 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 down. And then we get to February 2017, um, we get to February 2017, and that really is the last really full month, if you will, uh, for uh, with President Obama, uh, with, you know, for, for the last full month. Well, actually, if you take, if you take the January 2017, it was 7.2%, 7.2%, okay? So then all of a sudden, so that's so 19.3 to 7.2, that's a drop of 11.1 points. So Trump, comes in at 7.2, it goes down to, under him, five, uh, let me uh, fix this, 5.1, uh, we, we go here, then all of a sudden, it starts going up, and going up, and going up, and right now, we're at 15.4. So he claims that how he's done so many things for black people economically, but then he makes his first step at, when you hear Donald Trump say, He's done more for black Americans than any other president in history. Do you say, wow, he's telling the truth? Or do you say, man, stop lying? I think that's a rhetorical flourish that Donald Trump likes to use and many Republicans as well. When you look at and what we have to have this conversation. Is it, is it true or false? Well, I, I, I don't think that that's true at all. But I think that their people have different metrics that they use to gauge what that is. So, what's, so what's, Barack, what's his metric? Well, well, I can't. I've never had a conversation with Donald. No, 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 Trump, no, so no, no, no. Hold on, but no, but you just said people use different metrics. What do you think is the metric that Donald Trump and the Republicans are using to determine that they've done more for Black Americans than anybody else? What do you think? Like, well, what, well, what do you think he's using? 
Well, I, what, 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 I, what I would imagine is that the efforts around criminal justice reform, I would also, and as you noted, but yes, the unemployment rate, if we're talking about things like um, the increase in black women businesses, all of the metrics that presidents themselves use to gauge how they're responding to various but, communities. But more than any president in history? So, so you, do you believe that Donald Trump has done more for black people than President Johnson did by signing the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Voting Rights Act of 65, and the Fair Housing Act of 68? And also the, well, cre and, and also the creation of Head Start, the poverty programs, and all those initiatives. Do you think Trump has done more for black Americans than what LBJ did? Well, I don't think that, uh, for me, I wouldn't frame it as a conversation as any president doing more, because I but think- he Trump, I mean, But he did, but he said that, so I'm asking you. Yeah. I mean, even, even when Jonathan Swan asked him about President Johnson, Trump said yes. Do you believe that Donald Trump has done more for black Americans than what President Lyndon Baines Johnson did? Well, I don't think that you really can compare the impact of civil, what happened during the civil rights era. But he does. To anything that that's, that's Donald Trump. But I'm no, so, no, so, so, I, no, 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 no. I'm asking you, to, asking I'm asking you to give me an actual answer. Do you believe, so I, do you so believe. I told you, and this, we initially started the conversation. I said, no, that's not something that I agree with. You literally asked me that. And I answered it flat footed. No, I don't believe that. Then you asked me. You right, said, right, right, because well, he said all these metrics. Think? He Republican said all he said all these metrics, and I'm not trying to understand what the metrics are, because I mean, well, if you look if at the metrics, and so what your question it's like two was, of them. Well, Malik, what do you think that Republicans or Donald Trump are talking about? You're not asking me what I think. You're asking me to think what Republicans and Donald no, Trump think. No, aren't you? I, uh, hold up, aren't you a Republican? Of them because uh, I'm the one aren't you a Republican? Aren't you a Republican? Answer your question again. Uh, no, I don't think. Melly, are you Republican? Has been more impactful than Lyndon Baines Johnson. No, I do not believe that. But you don't have anyone on the show who's pushing that. This is an argument, I guess, no. that you want to have. No, no, no. no actually, me, no, it's not an argument no, I want to have. The answer is no. I, I, so I just I'll say it again. No. I, I just find it interesting. I, just, I don't believe it. I just find it interesting, Kelly, to, to listen to this dude. Throw this out. I had to smack Herschel Walker's son the other day on Twitter who said that Donald Trump has provided more job opportunities for minorities than any other president in history. And that's just a flat out lie. And again, these are the lies they toss out. Uh, and he tosses this stuff. Out. He's just lying. Just lying. Kelly? I mean, but he's been doing that for the past five years now. And I don't anticipate that changing anytime soon. Uh when he talks about the things that he has done for black people and people of color, with the exception of giving HBCUs money that they already deserve and letting people out of prison that weren't supposed to be there in the first place, I struggle to find a point of, of agreement that he's done anything for this black person specifically, um, let alone the rest of my people. So I don't, you know, like, I don't really take what he says seriously anymore. Um, I used to, uh, back in 2016, when, you know, being the president actually had weight in this country, but now it is really a president who, who cried wolf every single day. And then not only is he crying wolf, he's trying to prove that the wolf is there. He's not just crying about, he's like, look at this, here's a wolf. And it's like, you know, Microsoft publisher uh, pieces of paper with big old chunks of pie graphs and bar charts that say absolutely nothing. So I don't, again, I don't take anything what, uh, 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 I don't take anything that our president says seriously because I don't know if he takes himself seriously. Truly, because nothing out of his mouth for the past five years has made sense in any context, let alone what he's done for black people. Folks, well, can I just say I mean, let, I let me, uh, I just, I mean, Joseph, go ahead. Joseph, just, hold, wait, wait one second, Melik. Melik, Mel Mel hold on. Joseph, then Melik. Joseph. Yeah, I mean, j just quickly here. I mean, I think the reality is that I think what you're talking about, Roland, is true. Uh, but I think there is a little kernel of truth buried in what the president does says because of the simple fact that my entire adult life and parts of my, I mean, my youth, I mean, we sat here begging and pleading to have black men and women released from prison for crimes they had no business being in prison for. 
Um, and so the notion that we would actually basically ignore that piece of landmark legislation, I think, is disingenuous. We wouldn't ignore it from anybody else. Wait, 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 hold up, factually correct. We've never ignored it on this show. And what we also haven't ignored is that we haven't ignored that they that Republicans blocked the, le the legislation under Obama. And we also haven't ignored that initially, initially, Trump only wanted to do prison reform. When the bill went from the House to the Senate, Dick Durbin and also Chuck Grassley, Harris and Booker said, no, 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 no. This ain't good enough. And it actually became a criminal justice reform bill in the Senate. And that's the one that got signed. But initially, Jeff Sessions was fighting it. And, and uh, look, and I had personal conversations with Jared Kushner on this. And so that's what you had. But go right ahead and finish your point. So yeah, we haven't ignored it on this I, I show. The, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I think, I think the, the crux of the matter is that the legislation got passed the same way every other legislation gets passed. You have amendments, you have people that fight for additional things. But what, what ends up hurting this, and I think, again, what the real untold story is, is what could have been for the Trump administration. This is an individual who, whether you hate him or love him, has a certain level of clout with a robust portion of Americans that do not want to wrestle with the vestiges of our, our lesser angel. Um, he could un uniquely... Uh, talk about the issues that have affected George Floyd and so many people of color, he has chosen not to. He could uniquely be willing to bridge the divide in this time of COVID-19 when it comes to perhaps the, the, the death of somebody uh, like Congressman Lewis. He has chosen not to. And so I think, to me, the greater tragedy um, is to not necessarily say that he what he is talking about is so unfounded, but the fact that there was actually a possibility that it could have been true had he only accepted the challenge. Um, and so I think that, to me, that is kind of the, the, the silver lining or the, the unfortunate outcome um, that too often gets ignored or lost um, in the flourishes. Well, I, so I, well, I'll say this here uh, before, Mel, you make your final point, and I got to go to a break. Uh, I'm sending a text to somebody else was right now. Is that actually, if you even say, has he done more than a Republican president? Richard Nixon actually did more when you look at uh, the programs that Bob Brown well, we put in Huff. place. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We can, I mean, I, 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 mean yeah. the, I mean, the numbers don't lie. But, Melly, go ahead with the final point. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I think what we should all acknowledge is that there is a macro and a micro discussion when we're talking about things that impact the black community. We know as a fact that the things that directly impact us happen on the local and state, local and state level. At the presidential level, they're more macro things. So they're things like health care, the, the Obamacare or um, Trump's criminal justice reform bill. They're things that each president comes in and they add, they maybe add you know, new ideas for themselves or they piggyback on things that the previous administration did. We saw that with Barack Obama and George Bush. We see that now with Donald Trump and Barack Obama. But, but Trump wants to drop the Affordable is, Care Act. Is, I'm sorry? But Trump, Trump wants to drop the Affordable Care Act. I think the Republicans, and I actually, I was listening to the news, I think it was on yesterday, is that this was going to be a focus. I think that the Republicans Man, like, that's a lie. A Man, that's a lie. Trump, that, we ran an ad just the other day. Trump has been saying, Trump actually said two weeks ago he was going to sign a new health care plan by July. Just Monday in news conference, he says, oh, I'm going to sign it in two weeks. He lying. Mitch McConnell, act Republicans came out and actually said, there is no plan. We have not seen a plan. Nobody knows what the hell he's talking about. He's lying. Well, I'm thinking when I'm not, I'm not just talking about Donald Trump, I'm talking about the Republican plan in general. There's no There's plan. The, the Republicans well, say there is no health care plan. They said it. Okay, so to start back where I was before you interrupted me, what I no, like I, I had to give a factually correct. No, you're just cutting me off and not letting me. No, finish I'm at, no, but no, but you you mentioned the continuation. You mentioned the continuation of the Affordable again, Care Act. Trump point, wants to end the Affordable Care Act. Something. This is something that I would like Republicans to focus on. And I believe what I've heard over the last few days is this something that the Republican caucus itself is going to start <laughs> focusing on because they realize that in 2020, when, when, and when Trump...
office um, reelected, that they're going to need something to get whether Barack um, Obamacare is totally gone or not. The Republicans are going to need a plan, and there are conversations what to do in 2021. Let I doubt very seriously that there will be a plan before November, but I do expect in the second term of Donald Trump, Republicans' hands will be forced where they would have to deal with the issue of health care. Let me help all of y'all out. Republicans took more than 50 votes, 50 votes to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, and that entire time they kept promising they had a plan, they, ha they have none. Trump has been saying when he ran for office and in the last three and a half years that he has a, re a replacement for the Affordable Care Act, he has never presented one, there is none. And so here's the other deal, Malik, he ain't getting reelected. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, uh, Seek.com is a black-owned company. Uh, they make uh, these virtual reality headsets here. Uh, you can utilize it with their content on Seek.com. Mary Spio is a sister. Uh, she actually is the inventor of this, and so this is a great, uh, I love the colors, black and gold, my frat colors, and also they have these great headphones, tremendous bass, 360-degree headphones, 4D as well. You can use this for gaming. You can attach a, a microphone to it. Uh, you can also do Bluetooth or do the power cord, uh, and, of course, you can use this uh, for phone conversations as well. The other day I was uh, walking, a uh, two-mile walk, and so listen to music, but then had that conversation when people call my cell phone with these headphones. All you got to do is go to Seek.com, C-E-E-K.com. Use this promo code, RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020, for a discount for these products. And when you support them, you support Roland Martin Unfiltered. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.